Uh, morning. Uh, my name is Anshu Gupta. I'm coming from an institution in India called Kunch with uh, co-founder Minakshi, who will be joining us later. We basically work on the very basic issue of clothing with a much larger vision of converting the entire urban wastage into a rural resource. So about 13 years back, we raised a very basic question. We said, if you talk about three basic needs of humankind, you say food, cloth, and shelter. But then suddenly, you ignore the clothing part. Cloth, you remember, when a disaster happens. So when an earthquake happens, a tsunami happens, you suddenly think people need clothes. So the basic question was that if earthquake is a disaster, if flood is a disaster, how come winters are not a disaster? Why don't we have figures of people who die or suffer due to lack of clothing in winters? And please remember that in earthquake, the shake kills people. In flood or tsunami, the excess or the force of water kills people. But in winters, the cold does not kill people. Because if the cold kills people, even I would have died. I survived. Someone else died on the road. It's not the cold, but the lack of clothing. Also, disaster hit people do not need clothes. Because clothing is something which you store. You can only wear one at a time. First thing which a disaster takes away from you is your storage capacity. So even the second pair of cloth is a burden on you. Many years back, just after my journalism days, I was roaming around on the roads of Old Delhi in search of a story. Suddenly, I find this person called Habib and his blind wife, Amna Begum. Followed him. They were on this tricycle rickshaw. Very basic and a different kind of profession that they pick up unclaimed, abundant dead bodies from the roads. I followed him. I spent about a week with him to understand. A lot of people die on the roads. You know, in many, many countries, including India, because of various reasons. These are basically migrated people. Police or the local system will inform Habib Bhai. Habib, with his blind wife, Amna Begum, would go pick up the dead body. He'll be paid 20 rupees, which is not even half a dollar, and two meters of white cloth. And he'll bring the body to the crematorium. That's all about a migrated person who comes in search of a job. When I was doing a story, two statements came up. One, Habib said that in winters his work goes up. Many times he has so much of work that he can't handle it. To my utter surprise, in 91, 92, in a cycle of 24 hours, Habib Bhai used to pick up 10 to 12 bodies in a range of 3 to 4 kilometers. In the summers, the average used to be 4 to 5. He had a little daughter, about 5 and a half, 6 years old. That's my daughter. But Habib's daughter gave the most shocking statement by saying, when I feel cold, I hug the dead body and sleep. It does not trouble me. It does not turn around. This is the story of the capital of one of the fast growing country. What about the larger part of the world? Because when you talk about development issues, you have some 100, 150 issues from domestic violence to global warming. You will never find clothing written as a subject. We started working on that. The only difference, we said that it's not about donation, because the biggest problem with donation is that you give what you have, you never give what people need. And if you talk about the village people across the globe, the biggest asset of the, these people is something called self-respect, is something called dignity. You do not find beggars in the villages. Begging is a typical city phenomena. In a very big process, the material comes to us. We process, match the need of people, and then it goes to the villages, not as charity, but as cloth for work, where now people take up development activities in the villages as per the local needs, not imposed by outsiders. And then instead of money, they receive cloth, utensil, footwear, and all kind of different materials which we collect. Right from digging these kind of wells, at absolutely no cash transaction in various parts of the country, to making these bridges. This particular bridge is about 240 feet by 6 feet. On the spot, direct expenditure which we spent was less than $50. In Indian rupees, 2,250 2, rupees. And then much larger bridges coming up all across the country, just as a part of cloth for work, where the currency is material. 
where it is given as a reward, not the monetary uh, compensation. Or just taking care of these water ponds, you have schemes to dig new ponds. You do not have schemes in any government machinery to clean up the basic source of water. That's what we take up. Or roads like this, which were not visible, now visible. Or to the schools and library structures. So it's a variety of activities which we take up across the country as a part of cloth for work. If we just analyze last two years of work, although the institution is about 13 years old, some 900 activities like this, where a very basic focus is on sanitation, water, infrastructure development, and we literally take up the local need, local issue. One more aspect of a school material, because whenever we talk about education across the globe, we talk about infrastructure, education policy, teacher-student ratio, without understanding the education is still hampers because they do not have basic material to study. Large number of urban underutilized school material, which analyzed to the rural or the slum parts of the country, it is again not given as a charity because we do not believe in that. We do not want that a five years old student actually start getting a pencil box as a charity. These children go through some process where we just see whether the kid is coming on time or not, the kid takes a regular bath or not, very basic etiquette, behavior issue, and then they are rewarded. With toys, a major experience because many countries have lots and lots of centers for the kids. But these kids, these centers do not provide anything except a bit of 50 grams of 100 grams of cooked or uncooked meals. With the old toys, we experiment. We make these places colorful. Just one reaction from a worker of, of an Anganwadi worker, which is a local kid center, that the earlier child was not coming. Now the kid does not want to go. The only difference is now the centers have a few toys. Another major issue we touched upon in 2004, 2005, when we said that whenever you talk about basic need of people, one of the most basic ignored need is also a sanitary pad. The issue is that if you do not have enough to wear yourself from where and how you bring this piece of cloth, which is now called a sanitary pad. Can you imagine that in 2004, 2005, even if you go on Google and type sanitary pad, sanitary napkin, you will find the fanciest products from some of the countries, but not even a single major search, not even a single major initiative or product. We started traveling across the country and found out that they use the dirtiest piece of cloth because for them it's a synonym of dirt. They wash it, they cannot dry it in sunlight. Washing itself is a problem because now the entire village, you know, population is dependent on hand pump. Hand pump is always put up at a public place in the name of public convenience. With moisture, they wear it again. If you have two to three women in the family, their cycles are different. They're sharing the same piece of cloth. Then it is not only shared in the family, but with the neighbors also. Then we found that millions of women, not only in India, but in many countries of Asia, Africa, are actually using things like sand, ash, jute bags, dry leaf, dry grass, even plastic sheet. So anything which can absorb, which can stop, is used as a sanitary pad. We found cases where a lady used a piece of blouse which had a hook, she died of tetanus. We found a case where a centipede entered through the body and the lady died. We found that the largest number of uterus removal at the childbearing age is actually happening just because of a piece of cloth. Because the moment an infection happens, now these people are told that now you have a chance of cervical cancer, so it's better to remove your uterus and ovaries. And the very simple solution is this. This is your old, torn, useless cotton, semi-cotton cloth, which is now converted into a sanitary pad, which has become the cheapest possible sanitary pad, 100% biodegradable, because it does not have a small sheet of plastic. This is how we open up this most taboo subject. The entire material is processed like this. As I said, that you always give what you have. You never give what people need. So it's very important to match the needs of people. This, these are just some of the glimpses of our processing center. Variety of material, right from cloth utensil footwear to generator computer. I mean, one of, one of the case studies is when, when a generator, the old generator was sent to a village, and it actually electrified the entire village. What picture you see on the top. 
anything which is waste, which is not used, which is not usable, is actually converted into many products. If you see this, this is a torn jeans, which is now converted into a school bag. The moment you make it a bit fancy, and you add your old tie for mobile and for pen pouch, that actually becomes a big conference bag. This is again out of some waste cloth, the skipping rope, because when we were collecting toys from urban India, these were mostly indoor games. The rural parts need indoor, you know, outdoor games. A range of products, we make almost 30, 35 different products. These are actually, you can see it later, these are your old audio and video tapes, which are woven into this, because that's a major, major e-wastage. While we were working on the napkin, we also found a very critical gap of the undergarment. So this is the undergarment which is created out of your old t-shirts. No other undergarment on this earth has raw material of Adidas and Nike. This has. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty durable that way. This is a range of products which we create. If you talk about the organization, it's a five-member governing body, about 150 full-time people with nine offices. We implement our work in about 21 states and strong network of 250 partner groups with whom we work. These are the, these are the basic stakeholders. This is how the organization we run. 50% still come from individual and that's what we want to, I mean, we just want to remain like that. Some of the major awards which have come to us uh, in the last few years of our work. Typical annual budget is just $500,000. And if you just see a bit of impact, some 900 development activities in the last two years, we channelize almost a million kg of material every year. In the last couple of years, about 200,000 kg of material is converted. You know, the absolutely waste material. This, after giving decent clothes to people, the torn clothes which are converted into products are also converted into quilts, which is an income generation activity. Two million sanitary pads, 200,000 pieces of toys, stationery, almost 2.1 million pieces of clothes, with a very basic idea that we actually want to create a parallel economy with the old material as a valuable resource. It's not only about economic development, it's, it's a major tool for the social change to focus on the ignored basic need to fill urban-rural divide. And it's one of the largest civic participation movement. We free up, we try to free up mega resources of people so that they can actually use it for some other hard pressing needs. And the entire work is based on the value of local wisdom. With a very basic modium, uh, you know, uh, ultimate objective that we want people to understand their own potential and take up the development issues. The whole idea is to build up a sustained culture of dignified giving and dignified receiving also. Just last pictures, very common sight. We call this child poor, hungry, clothless. We also call this child community. Why can't our community look like this? The only difference is a piece of cloth. And look at the change in the body language of the kid. If you go to this person, you might not even go to him. Suddenly, he becomes a very respectable farmer. Many people call him mentally challenged. We call him the hope of nation. Thank you very much. <laughs>